Mario in Chile writes to me, Hey Paul, hey Mario, I've been following your YouTube, YouTube channel, your you, YouTube uh, for several years and your explanations are great. Why thank you sir. I'm an audiophile since I was a kid, I'm 48 now, hmm. uh, please shed some light on this doubt that I've had for the longest time. How can a passive preamp sound right given it has no buffer to solve the impedance problems of the volume control potentiometer. There are several companies selling these preamps without any kind of internal components except for a pot and an input selector. I have done the experiment myself, connecting an audio source to a power amplifier through a pot and only a pot, and it just doesn't sound right. However, audiophiles exist who seem sure that this is the way to get the best audio experience, please enlighten me. <laughs> well, no one better to enlighten you than me, because that's how we basically started out 50 years ago, our PS Audio. And by the way, before I get lambasted for maybe I should clean up my area before I do a video, I, I, I've been grinding away here in this area trying to build a new remote rig for Octave Records and I mean I've got uh, cases and cables and oh my lord in heaven what a project and so far it's been met with a lot of failure but what did Edison say I don't think I ever failed I just hit a thousand different ways of not succeeding or something like that I don't remember Anyway, passive preamps. Okay, when Stan and I started PS Audio way back 50 years ago, we made only a phono preamplifier, and later we added on a line stage, basically what he's talking about, except that it wasn't only passive. And that's because a passive preamp, which is basically an input selector and a potentiometer definitely does not sound the same as a properly designed line stage or buffer at the output. And I think there's a whole bunch of different reasons for it. But let me go over some of this. One of the things that we, well, and, and to go back in time, the preamp <clears throat> that we came out with, which was the linear control center, had an active line stage in it, and it had a switch that allowed you to go between passive and active. Now we did this because <clears throat> one of the things Stan and I discovered is there's a beauty to the clarity, to the transparency of a passive preamp, as long as you follow certain rules. Those rules being you can't have a pot, a potentiometer, with too high of an impedance. Most potentiometers that people in, that we, well, that use, that are designing stuff, they run 25, 30, 50K, right? 100K. Why not? You've got high input impedance that the pot is feeding into. They're readily available. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different reasons why that's a good idea. But if you're running a passive preamp, you're going to want to have that pot to be about 10K not 50k, not 100k. So at 10k, most source equipment has no problem driving that 10k load, and you don't have the problem of a high impedance pot trying to drive the cables and the input to the, to the power amplifier, okay? So that was the first trick that we learned. But in the end, that clarity and transparency of a passive preamp was colored by a loss in the bottom end, a loss of slam of impact. And technically why that is true, I, I don't know. I mean, we never, you know, much of what we did was simply by listening. We heard it, played around with it, defined what was causing it, how we could eliminate it, how we could make it better, and went that direction. So as I have said more times than I care to remember, 
engineering is a series of compromises. And you make the best compromise you can to come up with a product that does what you want. So in the end, what it turned out to be is using a output buffer or line stage that today we know how to make that is almost virtually transparent. So we've gotten beyond the problems that we had 50 years ago when we were first designing it, where the stages didn't sound so great. So today we can make a preamp, an active preamp, that sounds way better than a passive preamp. But there are still people who stick with passive preamps because like vinyl records, they have a certain charm to them that cannot be denied. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.